Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the African International Mediation Week, day three, uh, the second day of December uh, 2020. This is the afternoon uh, session on Young uh, Practitioners Seminar on Family Wealth Mediation, where we will be having an open discussion. We commence this uh, session by reciting the words of the national anthem in English. O oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, uh, this is an open discussion on uh, family wealth uh, mediation, and I will uh, open the floor for any one of us uh, to be able to share our experiences on family wealth mediation. Uh, perhaps a brief uh, overview, uh, just uh, uh, to get us up to speed. Uh, family wealth mediation aims uh, to marry the principles of mediation with the advantages of specialized skills in family wealth and estate planning, so as to create a form of mediation that resolves conflicts and provides lasting solutions that enrich lives. Um, so essentially uh, what uh, we are saying is that uh, competent family wealth mediators work with families in creating multi-generational wealth for families. So this kind of mediation is uh, the kind of mediation that uh, targets uh, families and deals with uh, matters of, health, of, of wealth, uh, such as uh, uh, succession. Uh, uh, things to do with inheritance and property. <coughs> and so, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, once again, I will be inviting us to be able to uh, share our experiences uh, in matters of family wealth. Uh, Fred, would you like to open this for us? Trade Committee. Hello, Sarah. Yes. I'm sorry, I've just come in. Huh? And uh, I honestly don't know what's going on. So I don't know. Maybe a bit more of the background of what's going on so that, uh, has there been a presentation of me or something? Uh, no, this, this is an open session, so you have not missed any presentation. Uh, the discussion uh, is uh, around the area of family wealth uh, mediation, which uh, basically focus on issues uh, around family wealth, which would be you know matters to do with inheritance, matters to do with family businesses, uh, matters uh, to do with property, so that kind of thing. And uh, what we are doing is we are trying to share our experiences uh, that we have had as mediators. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much, Sarah. You're welcome. Uh, sorry, I had a problem with my with my net. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I would like to say uh, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, so, so quite uh, old in the world of mediation, uh, though I'm trying to catch up. Uh, I I'm situated in Nakuru. 
affiliated to Jesilo Center, Conflict Resolution Center. So I, uh, with my family mediation experience, I have been dealing with the family, uh, with the children's department, maybe mediating some of their cases that mm -hmm. really need mediation. Because uh, when I started working with them or affiliating myself with them, I realized that not most of their cases uh, go through mediation. And uh, the people who work under the children's department actually do not have much knowledge of mediation. So uh, when we are there, we, we screen the cases that we feel need mediation. And when we screen the cases, we move this, uh, we move the parties through mediation, and we have been able to solve so many cases uh, through mediation. Uh, these are family cases, uh, especially dealing with children. So that is where I'm affiliated right now. And actually, I would like to get uh, so much experience in, uh, in the children uh, mediation and also as related to the family mediation. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, thank you, uh, Fred. Uh, mm -hmm. Any of the other mediators who would like uh, to share their experience in terms of uh, family wealth mediation? Uh, Fred has talked about uh, his experience uh, or with the children. Well, like I can see we're quite quiet. <laughs> okay, well, for me, <clears throat> I, have, I have dealt with uh, quite a number of uh, family wealth mediation in the sense of succession through court annexed uh, mediations. And uh, well, there are plenty, there are plenty, and sometimes they're very emotionally draining. And for me, what I would like as, okay, we are mediators and we are there, but I, I think one of the key roles we'll have as mediators is to encourage people to do their wills when they are still alive and strong. And uh, I think the best thing is even we ourselves as, as mediators today, have we done our wills? Fred, have you done, have you written your will? Eh? Yes, I have. You've written yes, your will. Anyway, the thing is this. Eh? <laughs> okay, so just generally what we have seen and particularly from the legal sector, for example, most of us lawyers have not done our wills. It's very unfortunate. It's, it's like it's the African culture. It's like we feel like when we are writing wills, we are calling death, you know? The Swahili say, So, for, and I have seen most of the scenarios that I have dealt with when it comes to succession matters is whereby there has mm -hmm. been no will. And if a will has been done, it has not been properly done. So that maybe it has gone to court and it has been challenged. And uh, yes, there, there are various reasons why, why, why sometimes a will would be challenged. The, the most interesting part, and maybe sometimes I sit back and I usually say, maybe I should have put my foot more down. Uh, I started this mediation and uh, there was a friend to the family. And a friend to the family came out more strong than the family itself, you know, and you know in mediations, a friend to the family, you can allow them to come in. And of course, sometimes you expect that uh, when they come in, that they are going to be, they are going to be supportive of the process. But they just zeroed in and nailed on something and they just said, this will is fake. There is no way Mze in his right mind would have done such a will, you see. 
and because he was not agreeing with this person and that person. So sometimes as mediators, um, those are some of the challenges, for example, I have found. When you're dealing with sensitive matters, really be careful whom you let come in with the family, because sometimes they tend to, they, te they tend to derail, they tend to derail the process. However, other times I have seen that sometimes, again, a family, uh, uh, a member of the family sometimes is very, very helpful. There's one mediation I actually finished in one hour flat, finished. And that is very rare because uh, unlike FIDA matters, these other matters you'll find yourself going on for three or four sessions. This was also a succession matter and it was an anchor to the family who just said, look here, you people, anything that your father gives you is a gift, it's bonus. And instead of us sitting here to struggle and see who gets what, who gets what, let us be very easy on this and let it go. And you, you see the, the children of the deceased had had a very hard position and they initially did not even want their uncle to walk in. But I found that the uncle was actually very, they listened to him. And from there, it was very easy for us to just agree on how the property would be shared. So uh, now that, that is one, again, now that one, there was no will. So the issues of wills, for me, I feel is very, very important. It helps, it helps us as um, mediators and also people who would also die one time to make it easier for our mm -hmm. families. And also when mm -hmm. we tell, them, as, we, as, we are, as we are doing, uh, as we are creating awareness of mediation and the beauty of mediation, mm -hmm. there's some things I think we should also be able to tell the public so that even if there are disputes in future, the disputes are much more easily solvable. Yeah, so that is the experience. That is what I have experienced when it comes to family wealth mediation. The other aspect sometimes, unfortunately, when you find that uh, uh, somebody inherits something or a business and they cannot run it. And they simply want to be there because maybe they are the son or they are so and so. And sometimes you find the family complaining that this person is uh, trying to take up this issue, but they will not be able to run the company. They're going to run it down. So those are some of the issues that I've come up with. And for me, I just see this is one of the areas that a lot of prevention can be done uh, for the people who are alive as much as possible, as much as possible. Let us do wills before. Let us um, help our families understand exactly what we are doing. Let them know which properties were. Sometimes uh, I've seen families also losing out because the, the, the deceased did not share with the family exactly where the property is. Yeah, so briefly, that has been my, my experience in mediation. Of course, there's much more, but uh, mm. not to be mean. Yes. Okay. So um, uh, this is an open dialogue with regard to our experiences, and uh, especially because well, with this, with the African International Mediation Week, and specifically on Friday when we have the Strategy 20 conference, we are looking at how to move forward with area, specific areas of mediation. Uh, areas to do with uh, matters to do with family wealth, which are around inheritance and succession, uh, commercial mediation, including such as the discussions that we had today, um, uh, uh, extractive sector, uh, labor, education sector, uh, matters to do with peace, uh, women and mediation, young mediators, and all these have been the um, let me say that the, the lineup that we have had in the program have been areas which we see there is opportunity, but we are yet to uh, be able to. Uh, we are yet to be able to, um, let me say, as mediators together to develop what can call like a strategy to enable us to be able to uh, move forward. So right now we are having an open discussion on what is our experiences, but most of all uh, is in terms of how how do we move, how do we move this forward? Not even moving ourselves. How do we move this forward? For instance. I have heard from um, uh, the discussion that has just come right now. Uh, Fred has talked about children. Um, and in as much as the children may not be, at, uh, especially when they're young, they may not be at the center, but then would it mean that this is a time to educate children with regard to matters to do with succession and inheritance? Because we are looking at how me mediators role is not only not to meet with the conflict. Mediators also can engage uh, very productively at the stage of prevention. So could it mean that we deliberately start um, engaging? Could it mean that we should, as mediators, deliberately start engaging with uh, 
uh, the children or is it at the youth level so that they can get to understand what uh, happens in the uh, uh, in the areas that relate to uh, succession and inheritance or uh, family wealth because the commitment or the view we have is that there can be multi-generational transfer of wealth we have seen it we have seen businesses that have been transferred from 1825 hardly do we have that in our own families the business will not survive the first person who starts it when they now go because uh, it just goes tumbling down and that's um normally we yeah, we know that we say that inheritance should be able to be there for you know even fourth generation and uh, you start for your uh, the fourth generation so the second thing that i've heard from this conversation uh, which has been uh, raised by phyllis uh, wangwe is with regard to families being able to develop wills so right now we have two points so far in terms of um, educating uh, children or when people are young uh, with regard to matters to do with family wealth. Um, secondly, that uh, wills, we, uh, wills are required. So probably we also get into uh, either supporting families to develop them. Uh, any of the other mediators on the call, this is an open dialogue in the area of family wealth, which relates to succession inheritance and uh, property, uh, uh, family property and its transfer. Any other mediator? We are looking at what can give us um, what we can have takeaways. So right now we have like we have two takeaways. Any other mediator from your experience? It could be in mediation or in your own family. Okay. Y yes, Wangare. Thank you. Yes, please. Who is speaking, uh, please? Yes. Pauline. Is okay. Yes, Pauline. Yes, Pauline. Well, yes, mediator Pauline. Yeah. I. I, I yeah, I'm not uh, very familiar with family mediation, uh, especially on wealth and uh, property. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I would like to say, it's very common, very, very common. Uh, we have seen it. We read it in the newspapers. We, re we, we have seen the people we know very well. They do not live. I agree with Phyllis about the will, because without a will, it, it becomes very strange, because even your siblings, the one you used to trust when your parents are alive, you can never know, you can no longer trust them because people start fighting. So the awareness and um, uh, then we give civic education in the matters of, um, of uh, family, uh, family property. I think that is the way to go. Let us give awareness as was Rihanna Hub. We can take this uh, like our own, uh, um, like our own uh, program, and we we give this as a, because we have seen what is costing many many families a lot of uh, a lot of grief. So I think that awareness is very important. We have lawyers who can guide on 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 how to write a, a, a will. I didn't know there is a good will and a bad will, uh, you know, but I know a will can be challenged in court. But mm -hmm. I think will is very important. We can take it over. Wangari, think about it as one of the programs for our Suriana Hub. And then we, we, we give the, the knowledge, which is power. Thank you. OK. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. And uh, uh, as, as I just mentioned earlier, uh, and thank you, Mediator uh, Phyllis, uh, Mediator, uh, yes, Phyllis, is that, uh, is that uh, in this particular uh, week, we are gathering insights so that when it when it comes to Friday, Friday is our day when we now refer to it as the strategy uh, conference. On Friday, we can put together how are we moving forward. So our discussion today, our discussion right now today on matters to do with family wealth, specifically around inheritance, succession, property, um, or, or families and its transfer, is to give us. Um, it's like we are building up now towards uh, Friday. So uh, three things that have come out from uh, the contributions today. One that came from um, Mediator Fred Committee is that uh, children uh, may be a good point to be able to access because uh, uh, for instance, for him in Nakuru, they're interacting with children and uh, through the children's department. Um, secondly, uh, Phyllis Subangwe has raised a concern that uh, families are of, of people are not leaving wills, including even uh, we, we ourselves who are a bit more enlightened uh, or aware, or again, she's also raised that, they, and, and that's what uh, media, the, the other mediator was uh, raising, that uh, there's something about, there's also what you can call bad wills. Eh? 
So the third thing that now um, uh, medi uh, mediator, the mediator has raised again, and I'll, 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 I'll break it into two parts. You have mentioned uh, that uh, trust goes away. Trust goes away. So again, it's probably how, how, how is it that the people who are together as brothers and sisters or as and cousins and aunties, just one person in that family, you know, is called to go to heaven and there's a, it, the whole family breaks down. So you've also talked about trust. And I think that would be a good one for us to pick in terms of how do we either, or, or there's a need for enhancement of family trust, which is not superficial, so that when that one person is now called to go to heaven or there's a change in the family situation, then everyone else, um, there's a breakdown. The next thing that you've said, and I think this this somehow seems to even like sum up quite um, a, maybe like a strat or a tactic that we could even uh, that could be adopted is on the aspect of uh, um, 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 what you've called civic education. They are ed edu letting people uh, get to know about it, working together with um, the lawyers who now can support in that in the conversations and also in the development of these wheels. Huh? So uh, yes, so we've got that so far. Bernard Rotich, yes, please. Yes, Bernard. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, thanks for this moment and also the, the topic on the family wealth. I want to say that from my own experience, not uh, particularly in mediation, but mm -hmm. having interacted with uh, various families on the same issue of inheritance, uh, one thing is very, very clear that uh, as parents, if parents do not come up with clear mechanisms on how their wealth is going to be shared amongst the, the children, then a very serious dispute is going to, to arise. Uh, situations come where children cannot forgive each other just because they feel that the way the parents shared the wealth was not very fair. So it's very paramount that uh, civic education be carried out for parents to to come up with clear mechanisms on how they intend the wealth to be mm -hmm. shared once uh, a time comes. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, is that a will needs to be to be drawn, and the children needs to be informed early in time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very good if a parent can be able to to share the the wealth to the children when they are still alive, as opposed to a situation where children will be fighting for the same same inheritance once once the parents are have passed on so i think it's a very crucial point mm -hmm. and uh siblings tend not to forgive each other when they they have knowledge that the division of labor was i mean of wealth was not done fairly thank you mm -hmm. okay Thank you very much, uh, mediator Bernard Rotich. You introduce um, uh, you introduce something else, which uh, I think for us is going back into the the heart of the family, which is the parents, huh? and uh, because it's actually yes. they're the ones who now be, they be, they, they bequeath or you know whether it's yes by, uh, uh, intentionally or because they they've been called on. So I think I'm also hearing that uh, what I've heard is that their yeah, parents. Are a target, just the same as probably the earlier part of the Mediator Fred Committee pointed out that uh, children could be a target, just so that probably we can have a breeder generation that has better understanding of this. An important thing that uh, Phyllis Wangwe said earlier is that uh, th there's a need for also understanding this as a gift, not an, not as an entitlement. So uh, yeah, I think that can also be tied in uh, in there. Uh, uh, Bernard Rotich, you've actually raised something else that's also quite interesting, that it would be good if uh, the, 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 the ones who are let's say, in the will get to know, let's say before, when the person is still, uh, whether is still alive, whether it's a parent or it could be even a relative, uh, because actually now when it comes to matters of um, wealth transfer, it's not only with regard to, let's say, like parents, because even it could be it's siblings and one of them now is not there, so the others are now um, fighting for it, or people who are uh, who are beneficiaries. So I think that's also something that would be quite interesting. So I think so far we have raised um, four, 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 four things. Is there any other mediator who has something uh, to say? So right now we were yes. uh, sharing with regards to our ex our either our experiences or most of all our thoughts on how to be able to advance 
um, the, the, the area that relates to family wealth and specifically coming from how we can be able to be a better support to families. Is there any other mediator would we'd like to say something? Yes, please. Kindly. Yes, I would like to share. Yes, please. Okay, this is Thanks. Sabina. Yes, please, Sabina. Yes, yeah. yes I, would like, I, I would like to share from my experience. Yes, uh, I had two two cases that I could not that were I found quite difficult. Now these were cases whereby these were all mature mature people, eh? but their father had died quite a while, and now they were fighting over the property. Now I found that those who had uh, upper, an upper, who, who had uh, more access to the wealth or those who had more wealth. And the others were claiming to get their piece of this well were not cooperative and therefore did not want to continue with mediation. Mm -hmm. Then also in such situations, I was not sure what the role of the lawyer was. I was in, in, the, in both cases. I wasn't very sure, but what that was, it was very clear that those who had an upper hand towards, I mean, those who had more access to the world were not cooperative. Then I also, also there was a situation whereby, for example, somebody had several wives and by the time they died, they had, they were with the younger wife who tends to have more access to the wealth. So again, as, so as it has come up, education is very important. Maybe people need to be educated. Mm -hmm. Because also in, Kenya and claimed assets are too much because mm -hmm. people, important people need to be informed, to be educated. And also people need to be educated that it's better to share the wealth when they are still alive. Because once they die, then people are not cooperating. It becomes very difficult, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, 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 I hear something extremely important in uh, your contribution, and I, I thank you for this contribution, uh, Mediator Sabina Muticia. The role of advisors who are around families or who can have access to families. And this could include now legal, this could include even uh, financial managers, it could also include other, it could also include other people who uh, are are around the families. Remember, families also have like property managers who have been either managing their their, prop, their, their, their properties on behalf of their parents. And so I think they, there's something that you now bring into this conversation that it's not just we standing alone as mediators. There is probably now that uh, like a, a, a group of advisors who are around the families who we probably need to bring into this conversation around uh, family wealth mediation so that when families are experiencing this uh, or when they get to that particular point, the advisors are also able to be supportive of, because families then uh, could, uh, perhaps they listen a lot to, to the advisors or the advisors are expected to actually, yeah, that's why the advisors, if it's let's say like the, the family lawyer, if it's a family doctor and, or if it's a family, let's say like uh, accountant for, um, uh, and, and such. Eh? So I think there's something you've introduced around that. Also I, you've highlighted with regard to the need for um, the, if it's wills to or discussions around how property will be divided to come in uh, quite early, I think it's it's yeah, if we perhaps reflect, we may, we may we may um, acknowledge that uh, we have known of experiences whereby the the old mze walked around with you know two of his brothers around his 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 piece of land and he was saying this one. Uh, this other one is for this other one. I think I want to leave it just to be for the entire family. And that could have been, that would be, I mean, how they they probably in advance before uh, now they had to go, even if they stayed, that they stayed on for the next for 20 years, that's how they probably uh, would manage the wealth. So I think even in our, because um, there's a comment on the African um, culture on one part uh, with regard to wills. I think our, our society was, has, has, has not necessarily been um, reckless around the aspect of handing over property to the next generation. And I think that's also something else we need to interrogate. So what has happened? Because let's uh, play around our great grand, our grandfathers, our, our great grandfathers, they did not write a will. And hardly did you find this, these battles. I don't know, Phyllis, what you can comment on that. And, and now um, we, we are introducing because yes, we are in reality right now, 
and because there's a place it seems there's a play between um you know what is what is the the, the modern way of the modern way that has come on with a ship and then what is the african culture way because they did not fight when they when your grandfather said that this piece of land has been left to sabina muticia even if sabina muticia was a lady who had gone and gotten married uh, and now she has come back no one would argue with that so what has happened to us so phyllis i think we can get your insight on that and thank you very much um, Sabina, because you've also uh, added into that there's a need for education. Phyllis, probably you can add to this, eh? Yes, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Medieta uh, Wangare. And maybe just before I go to that, I, I think I inadvertently said bad wills. Huh? It's good I clear that space is, so that we don't use that term and somebody wonders what we are talking about. There are these wills that can be invalidated. And there are usually various reasons as to why the wills can be invalidated. One of the reasons is that you see when you by the time you're making a will just quick a quick one yeah, is that you must have mental capacity to make that will there must be no element of duress i mean because if at one time they, they, they go to court and they challenge that, that person was mad you see now that that makes the bill be put aside and now the court has to decide maybe it's made to look like he was he made the decision under duress he was forced you see that invalidates the will and then um there are times maybe when there are alterations on the will after it was signed. And then again, you also have to be very careful when you are a beneficiary of the will and you are actually there when it's being signed, sometimes it can get very tricky. So those are just some of those elements. And sometimes that is why it is best left to, to lawyers who understand that because then they, they know the angles that are looked at. And even if you make a will, please always have a lawyer look at it or let the, the lawyer draft it and keep it safe. So basically that. Now, when it comes to um, African culture, it's interesting. Uh, my dad died uh, 19 years ago, let's say about 20 years ago. My mom died this year. We are laying her to rest in, a, in about two weeks time, her remains. And actually this thing has actually come up because when, when, when my dad died, there is some piece of land which he said was for the boys. So my mom, when she went and uh, when she was subdividing the property, for the boys, coach told her, there is no way you can give uh, just the boys, you have daughters, you must give the daughters something. And so my mom gave her something out of what was for the boys. But there is another piece of property somewhere, which I remember very well, my dad on his deathbed said, that is for my girls. Is In case of anything, that's for my girls. Now it so happened, recently my grandmother died and I was at home and one of my brothers wants to go to that property that, that my dad said is for the girls. So I just told my uncle, I asked my uncle, were you there when dad said this? He said, yes, that settles. You see, let me have moved out of it because as Africans, as Africans, we value our culture so, so much, you know, and I've realized it's not even amongst our culture only in Western, but I also saw it coming up with some people in, in Central, yeah, whereby as, as, as Africans, many times we really, really, really want to honor the wishes of the deceased. We don't go so much by what was necessarily necessarily written down. What matters is what did Mze say? What did mom say? And as much as possible, that's what we want to honor. And we can go to court and contest that, fine. But again, if we go to court and say, that is what our father, our father would have wanted, usually the court will not challenge that and we'll go with it. Unless, and um, the only reason sometimes where the court sometimes would interfere to some extent is when somebody is completely disinherited, for example, a dependent, a, a child or something like that, who was being taken care of by the deceased and now there's nothing left for them. Otherwise, many times, if you present it to court as that is what you are presenting to court, that is what the MZE wanted, usually the court will not challenge that. And it's usually as good as, as written. And now it will now be reduced into writing in the judgment and that is the way the property will be apportioned. Just briefly. I hope, I hope I've made sense. Yes, it does, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I would like to be able to uh, summarize what we have said. Thank you very much, uh, Mediator Phyllis Wangwe. So I, I will summarize just with the points that um, have seemed to come to come out, and uh, I encourage all of us to 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 look out for the Friday session where we will actually now be cons be consolidating uh, the key areas of how we move forward with uh, topical areas. Because one of the things is, uh, um, and if you are in the session we had on uh, Monday, Monday, Monday evening, 
uh, we had the session with the San Francisco Bar Association team and uh, the discussion that uh, we had at that time, one of the key things that came out is that mediation, mediators take up another role of being the ones to reach out, being the ones to be very compassionate to make sure that these disputes actually first do not exist. And I think that's what may be, be called on us when it comes to this area. And in that, then you would be able to get, uh, yeah, let me say if it's like your line of work or, uh, or, or, or be able to identify uh, how you can be able to serve. So the session we'll be having that relates to us being able to put an action plan together is on Friday at 11 o'clock. It's a one hour session where we will just be identifying the things that we have picked from the from the from uh, this mediation week and how we move forward. So uh, what I've heard from you uh, again, um, um, mediator Phyllis Wanga is, uh, the, the, the key role of the legal advisors. Uh, and, and, and I think, yeah, it's a, it's a very important role, which again, I, I think it's not even about the role. It's about how to tap into it, because then it means we probably are not, are not tapping into it. And then the other thing I think I've heard is that uh, still back again, how we get families to, to really work as families, whether, you know, whether there's, there's, there's a breakdown or whether there is a breakdown. I think when, we, when people are children, one or the other, there have been many breakdowns, but they were able to still you know, move um, on together. So with that and with the points that came out earlier, I would like to be able to close this se se uh, session. I would like to thank all of you for joining this session. Um, our session today, um, um, uh, the session that we were having right now, we um, have been having a discussion uh, in the area of uh, family wealth uh, mediation. And uh, we took time to have an open discussion on uh, the area that relates to family wealth um, and mainly coming from the point of how to support families to create multi-generational wealth. Uh, key points that have come from uh, the discussion uh, right now is that there is need for education of the families, uh, parents, children in their different contexts, children to understand it's a gift, but and also at the same time parents especially to encourage that they can be able to uh, to, 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 to make the wheels or, and at the same time to, come to, to encourage communication within the family. The other point that has come is with, the, with regard to the role of family ad, of advisors, which includes the lawyers, uh, uh, the, the property managers and uh, accountants and all those people who'd be around a family when it comes to transfer of, um, um, of wealth. Um, the other thing that has uh, also been um, been able to be highlighted is that there's need for uh, what was termed as um, um, civic education uh, in this particular area. And I think with those uh, three put together, we have been able to summarize probably what are, could be action points for mediators. So with that, uh, we will now be able to close this session with uh, the words of the national anthem. Our next session will be at 4.30 p.m. And we will also be having an open dialogue with regard on, on in the area of international peace mediation. Uh, the session that follows is at 6 p.m. and we will be having um, a, dis uh, a discussion on the United Nations Security Council resolution, which is uh, 1325 on women, peace and security led by mediator uh, Jane Amiri. At 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. we will have a session that will train us on how to develop our uh, professional mediation practice, our business models and our strategy. And that session will be with the San Francisco Bar Association and we look forward to be together. So we'll share the words of the national anthem and then close this session. Thank you for joining us. My name is Wangari Kabiru, and I look forward to being with you in the next session. In Kiswahili, e mungu nguvietu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwengao na mlinzi, na tukai na udugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. So I wish you a very good afternoon. And as you catch, uh, 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 to fill up your glass of water as we were trained today, today then uh, we can see you in the next session. God bless you and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.